and welcome back to Meeple Village. Today we're going to be doing a full run through of Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. Now, in order for me to avoid all spoilers because this game is super story driven, I'm going to be playing the tutorial that comes in the game. That way I won't spoil any of the locations, any of the story, but you will have a chance to check out Tainted Grail and what it has to offer. So why don't you just join me at the table and let's play Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. All right, guys, I have the game set up and ready to go. And in this game, we are going to be playing as Bior. Now, let's look at our character. I have his combat deck and I have his diplomacy deck ready to go. The combat stats are on this side and the diplomacy stats are on this side. Uh, in order to know what stats he starts with, it's really cool. All the characters have this, they're double-sided. And on one side is the setup. So all you have to do is take a look and copy what's here on your board. So as you can tell, he starts with two aggression. Uh, he has one courage, one practicality. And that's his combat stats. On the diplomacy side, he's not very empathetic. He not, has no empathy. He does have a little bit of caution, one caution, and no spirituality. Now, he starts with three food and one wealth. So I've marked that by placing three cubes on the food tray over here, and then one wealth down there. And that's it for the setup. Um, apparently, we are a... Uh, local smith and he does have uh over here if you look he has an ability of crafting but it, it's actually not really gonna come to play in the game but what will come in the game is his i guess disadvantage every hero which remember we're not really heroes but every character has a disadvantage now for him he has a festering wound and it says lose one health every time you become exhausted and with that let's look at his levels right now he starts at full health, which is nine, and he starts at full energy, which is six, and then he starts at no terror. But uh, if we lose enough energy to go into the red, then he becomes exhausted, and that's when that festering wood, wound is going to come into play and is going to actually uh, give us a little bit of damage. But that's it. Now I have the, the encounters already set up. And because this is a tutorial, we're only going to have one encounter. All the cards say your first encounter on them. Uh, and if you can tell, they have different colors. And the colors do mean something. The blue ones are going to be your diplomacy. Uh, and the other ones are all combat, different kinds of combat. Some of them are just animals that you meet in the wild or stuff that you meet in the wild. Some of them are humans, which is this one. So every, every deck is going to be have a little bit of a different flavor. These are the locations that we're going to be exploring in this game. Obviously, in the, in the full game, there's going to be a lot more. And then this is our map. We start in our hometown, which it's called something really weird. Uh, Kuanakot or something like that. I'm probably saying that wrong. It's a farm hold. And our guy, the light guy, the mini here, is standing right here. His dial is set to eight. So he's ready to go. We have kind of eight days to before he completely goes dark and then obviously we won't be able to explore. Um, in the game, this guy kind of tells us what is available. Anything that is adjacent either diagonally or orthogonally, we can, we can explore and we can see. Uh, but we could not, for example, be able to see what's north of here or south of here or either, either east or west because he is not adjacent to those areas. Now the game has asked us to set it up like this and with that, Setup is complete. Like I said, our little character is over here, ready to go. And we are ready to go as well. So let's go to gameplay. Now, before we start, let's go ahead and read what this story is all about. They still call this place a farm hold, even though barren fields provide little food and crumbling walls offer no protection. The last relic of the glory days of Kunanakt is its menhir, always adorned with red ribbons lit by candles and with a daily offering at, at its garn feet. As long as the menhir repels the weirdness, the townsfolk are ready to endure anything. But last night, the weirdness came closer than ever before. A man was lost, 
following the call of his future self. A house on the outskirts of town has turned inside out, its furniture grown, in, grown into a bloated outer shell like barnacles on the side of a boat. For many hours, the air tasted of metal and sour milk. Now people say your guardian in here is failing, like many others all over the land. For you, the night was even worse. The festering wound in your side throbbed as if something tried to tear itself free and join the rolling clouds of weird outside of town. In the morning, a boy comes running to your shack. Master Erfer needs to see you. Mob, you big goof. You chase the brat away with a well-aimed throw of a boot and immediately start to regret it as the boot lands in a deep butt puddle outside your door. All right, let's get to the first day of the game. Now the game comes with three different player aids and that tells you how humongous this game can be. We are going to be following the order of the day player aid to go through our day together. So the first thing is at the start of the day. We are going to remove any expired manihirs, but right now there are none, um, so we don't need to do that. And if there were any locations from those expired manihirs that we can no longer uh, be able to see because the light has turned dark, then we would take those out, but that's not happening right now. Uh, then we reduce the, all the time markers on the, di the dials on the manihirs. So we're gonna take this little guy and we're gonna bring him to seven. Now the numbers are kind of really hard to see. I wish that they would have make that a little better because I, I have a really hard time but it's on seven we're good to go all right so then we are going to reveal the next event card now uh, the, if we were playing a full game we would have a deck of event cards but in the tutorial we do not they instruct us to go to the journal and read a passage our event reads quest speak with Quanax blacksmith erfer and here's a hint to meet Erfer, you have to explore the Quanax farmhold location. Okay, great. So that was our event. And now we know that we need to explore probably for our first action, but let's keep going. We need to move guardians, but there are no guardians, at least not right now. And then the last thing we need to do at the start of the day is pick active items and secret cards. But again, we don't have any of those, so we can skip right through it. So we're going to go to section two during the day. And uh, until everyone runs out of energy or passes, we can perform one action each in any order. Now, in my case, it's only Bior, so he's going to be doing all the actions until he passes, until he runs out of energy or we decide to pass. So let's go. So as hinted, the first thing we're gonna do is explore. And to do that, we need to lose an energy. So we're down to five. And in the, if you were playing the actual game, we will turn, we will flip this card, we'll take everyone out, flip the card, and that's how you explore, you will read whatever the card says. But for the tutorial, they're asking us to go back to that journal and read the snippet there. So let's do it. So I'm here at Quanact Farmhold and on 101, and let's read what it says. It says, exploration journal entries for most locations in Tainted Grail start with an introduction that leads to your decisions. Read the location introduction first. Here it comes. A deep feeling of loss pervades Quanact, from dilapidated farms to the sunken eyes of those who remain in town. The Menehir in the market is nearly extinguished. Still, this place is the only home you ever knew. Now you're ready to choose what to do in this location. Below are two options redirecting you to different verses or paragraphs. Each has a requirement. The first time you come here, you're only able to choose the first option because the second one requires a specific part of a status or story trigger marked on your tutorial save sheet. If you're here for the second time, you should already have part two of the required status. So only the second option is accessible to you. So they're already making a decision for us. We don't really have much of a choice. So, but let's make our choice now. The first choice is speak with your master only if you don't have any part of the surprising errand status, which we don't, we will go to verse one. The second option is to complete your mission, which obviously we can't complete the mission because we just started, and definitely it requires part two of the surprising errand status. And we will go to verse two. So we're going to verse one. Erfer is up earlier than usual. As you enter, he hides a large pack behind a curtain and turns to you with a wide smile. You hear, lad? Good. Hope you're ready to stretch your legs a bit. I hear a star fill near whitening, and a local tanner picked it up. It's a solid ingot, 
large as your dinghy head. I'd rather not have it fall into the hands of some other smith. You nod. Falling starts at a ba bad omen for most simple folk, but they always excite blacksmiths and armorers. After all, the legendary Scalibur was forged from one of these cold shards of distant skies. Soon you depart, walking down the sloping fields toward the mist-covered forest, with some rations, your trusty hammer, and a purse of silver Erfer gave you. Before stepping into the shadow of the trees, you take one last look back at the ancient statue towering above shacks and houses. How much longer can this tired old thing protect Quanact? So we gain part one of the surprising errand status, and we gain one wealth, and then the exploration ends. So we know what we need to do. We need to go and find that star that has fallen. And our friend Effer gave us one wealth. So we denote that by putting another little cube on the wealth uh, tray. And now we're ready to go. So our next action is going to be to lose one energy so we can travel. We're going to travel north to Hunter's Grove. Now, as soon as we do that, we can explore anything that's around Hunter's Grove. So these two locations. Remember, we can't see this one because the menu here is too far away. Only one away, either diagonally or orthogonally. So here's our two locations. 106 goes here and we know that because if we look at that little number, it says, oh, over there, put 106. There it goes. And then 107 comes over here. Okay. Perfect. So now we have more map. And um, so now that we arrive at Hunter's Grove, there's something that we can do when we're there. And it says spend two energy to gain two food and also draw one green encounter. We're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to spend two energy. We're going to gain two food, which we're going to need at the end of the day. We're going to need to eat in order to recover health. You'll see that in a minute. And also we need to draw our first encounter of the game. It's going to be a green encounter. So here it is. And it is a mist shaped vermin. Now we're going to go and show you what combat looks like. So in order to do that, we have two cards that are going to help us out with that. One is the combat order and the other one is going to help us with the icons. Now, obviously in the tutorial, the game kind of tells you what to play and what to do. So we're not really going to need these that much, but just know that they're there because it's uh, like you can tell there's a lot of steps that you have to follow. But let's go to combat. The first thing we are going to do we are going to be drawing three cards. One, two, three. I'm going to reveal them. Okay. And now we have to go ahead and match these symbols. So the first card we're going to play is called attack. Let's bring these out and we're going to match. Now we can only match the symbols if we have that ability. Now remember, Bior has two aggression. So therefore that means that this is a valid match. When we match, we're going to get one cube. Now, if you look at the vermin, he needs four cubes in order to be defeated. So we're already one ahead. Now, if we look down all the way, none of these match, but at the bottom we have another match and this is a free match. Everybody can match this one. So one time we're going to get one more cube. So already we are doing two damage to this monster. The other thing that this card provides is an ability that's going to trigger at the, at, at the beginning of next turn. It's called a delayed ability. So it asks us to put a time marker, meaning to it just, it just helps us remember that we're going to do that a little later. The next thing we can do is if we have a flash symbol that actually matches, we can play a second card. Usually you can only play one card per turn. I'm going to remove the time marker because we actually do have in our hands something with a flash. It's right here. And if you remember, Bior does have some courage. So this is a valid match. So that means that we can play this card right now. Now, if we had some magic, which we don't, we could also use this card. But it's enough that we have it here. And then at the bottom, it tells us to draw one more card. So we're going to go to our deck and we draw that card. Okay. Now remember, this card also has an ability that says gain one more cube for every point of damage that you receive. And this will trigger when the monster attacks us. 
Now we cannot, we're not going to play any more cards because we don't have anything else that matches that has those flashes. Actually we do, but then this ability, uh, yeah, I think we're going to leave it like this and go to the end of this round. So we do a victory check. If we have four cubes, we, we were victorious, but we don't, we only have two. So then the enemy is going to attack. And now to see what the enemy does, we look in this table. If we have two cubes, we trigger the zero to two uh, ability of the monster or attack of the monster, which means he damages for one. So we're going to lose one damage. Now remember, we are going to gain one cube for every point of damage. So that means that we give him another damage. However, that means that our hero suffers one damage and we move this. Now, when we do that, now our energy is a little bit depleted. The max we can have now is plus two, not plus three. Not that we're going to get that high, but it just shows you that as you get damage, then things start to happening and it's harder actually for us to do more things during the day and, and et cetera, et cetera, obviously, because we're hurt. Now go back. And so at the end of our turn, we have to discard down to three cards, but we only have two cards in our hand, so that's okay. Now we're gonna to go to the second combat turn. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to draw a card, and now we have Battle Cry. So we can actually play Battle Cry to see if we can get a better card, because if you notice, it lets us draw an additional card. So we're gonna do that, and we get Throw. And that's probably the perfect card to play. It does have on the top the flash icon that we need to be able to play that card. And then if you look all the way down, we get one more cube, which brings our dude to four. And this ability is not even gonna trigger, so we don't need to worry about that. So we do a victory check, and yes, we have succeeded. And as a reward, it says right here, we gain one food. So all these cards are going to go back into our deck and they're going to be shuffled and this encounter just goes to the bottom of the deck but our deck right now is only one card so the encounter goes back down to the bottom of the deck and our combat cards just get shuffled so next time we might draw the same cards we might draw different cards we will never know but the important thing is that we do gain one food from all of this and now we're up to six food which is great we're going to need that food so after that battle with the vermin, we were successful, but our hero or character is wounded and he's out of energy. So I think we should end the day right here. And we're going to use our player aid to help us with the end of the day uh, triggers. So the first thing we need to do is rest. We consume one food uh, to restore one health and to lose any terror. Now we don't have any terror, but we are going to eat yum, yum, yum. Okay, and we are going to restore one health. Okay, and no terror because we're at zero. Uh, okay, if you don't have enough food, but we do. And then restore our energy to full. So we go back to six because we're resting, of course. Uh, and we're not exhausted. We can ignore that. Advance your character by spending uh, XP, experience, but we don't have any experience. Modify your decks. We have nothing to modify our decks with. And if you're in a location with the dream icon, then you can read our dream. So we're gonna do that. Um, and then if you're going insane, but we're not, and then we start the next day by going to stage uh, one again over here. But for now, we're going to dream. Hunter's Grove. As you walk into the shadow of the Hunter's Grove, your heart beats faster and your wound burns. You died not far from here two weeks ago, though it took some time for you to realize that. You try hard to not think about those events, humming your favorite tune to chase away the memories. Here's our dream. In your dream, you return to the dark ravine, deep in the grove. Like many others, you search for a little girl who went missing in Quanact. Instead, you find a mass of what looks like tangled black snakes crawling across the moss-covered stone. The mass rises on countless black legs and rushes at you. For a split second, you see the horrific truth. What charges is a malformed, overgrown, beating heart on countless legs of blackened veins and arteries. 
it opens its circular maw full of lamprey-like teeth. Next moment, it's on top of you, ripping into your side and trying desperately to push itself into your chest. With all your strength, you pull it away from the wound, throw it to the ground, hold it in place with your boot and crush it with a swing from your hammer. Then you wake up, alone in the forest, shivering. The wound burns again. You ask the village priestess and herbalist. You tried many remedies and quaffed foul-smelling mixtures. Still, the wound festers, turning black. You try to fall asleep, but your mind dwells on what fate awaits you and whether a thing like the one that killed you will emerge from your chest once you die. We lose one energy and we gain one terror. The prophetic dream caused Bear to lose a point of energy and gain a point of terror, and we're going to move the markers accordingly. After reading The Dream or a Nightmare, we continue, and we're going to move on to part eight, the start of the second day. So supposedly we had a dream, but it sounded more like a nightmare to me. Supposedly we only have nightmares if we're uh, really uh, high on the terror, but okay, we lose an energy. So today, or the second day, we're going to have less things to do, and we gain a terror which hopefully at the, end of the, at the end of the day, we can reduce when we eat food. Um, but that's it. Now we're going to start the second day. So we're going to go look at that player's aid that's going to help us with the F start of day abilities that will trigger. So the first thing that we're going to do again is remove the here that are expired, but we don't have any of those. Then we're going to reduce the uh, time dials on the here that is active. So we're down to six. There he goes. Mm. Okay, and then we're going to reveal the next event card. Now remember in the game, we're not going to have an event deck. We're going to go and read in the little book. So we're going to do that. Then the other things that we would do is move guardians, but there are none. And then the pick active items and circuit cards, we have none. So we're going to go ahead and read the event and then we can go to during the day stage two and do our actions. The event reads, tired and in pain, you start the final leg of your journey. And here's a hint. Sometimes event cards have an additional impact on the game. Remember to apply any rules you find on them. So on this lovely day, we're going to finish our travels. The first thing I'm going to do is spend an energy to move our character to the white whitening. And over here, there's an immediate uh, event that happens and it is uh, draw a blue encounter. And when you get to this location. So we're going to have a blue encounter, which as I mentioned earlier, is going to be our diplomacy. So we're going to be using our diplomacy deck to defeat this encounter. So let's see what it is. And we get a suspicious guard. Now I'm going to show you how this is a little different than when we play combat, just like the combat card, this little card has a lot of explanation. Of course, these green prints uh, are not going to be on the cards you play later in the game, but for now it helps to understand how the card works. So because we know that uh, we start right here on the gray as denoted here uh, with the start, place a marker here, and we need to get this little cube up there to win. If, we, if the cube ever moves all the way down, we actually lose the encounter. So. Again, the first thing we do is we're going to draw three cards and here's what we got. Okay. The first card we're going to play is going to be an eye for detail. And the reason why we're going to do that is because if you look at this particular encounter, whenever we match that symbol, we go up on the track. And we can match that symbol because we have courage. I mean, not courage, caution. It's actually the only uh, diplomacy skill we have. So that means that we go up one and then there's nothing down here, but we do have a uh, time ability. So, so we're going to place a time marker there. Now we go to the affinity check and we see that we have not won or lost the encounter. So the uh, opponent is going to respond and uh, we're trying to explain ourselves. We're in stage one. There's only one stage uh, on this uh, particular encounter. And we see that his response is to move down one. So all the progress we made is now we're back to zero, <laughs> but at least we're, we're, we haven't lost yet. 
Now we have to discard down to three cards, but we only have two cards in our hand, so we're good to go. Now for the second turn, we are going to draw one more card, and we got this particular one. We're also going to remove the time, and it says we draw a card, so more cards, better. We only have to discard down to three at the end of the turn, the combat, the diplomacy turn. So we can have four cards right now. Now, what are we gonna play? We are going to play Misdirection. Put it right here. And the reason why we're doing that is because if you look down here, it increases two. So one more and we can complete this. Okay, now, Let's see, we actually have Threatening Voice, and we're gonna put it here. It has that little uh, flash, so that means that uh, we can play this card as a second card. We don't have any magic, so we can't use that. But the text says, lose one reputation, and if you have at least two aggression, which we do, we move up one. So because we don't have any reputation, nothing happens to us, but we do get the trigger of moving one, which means we did it. Now we do an affinity check and we have completed this particular encounter. So what is our reward? One reputation. Aha, uh -huh. so now we have some reputation. So we take that off. This is gonna go back to the bottom of the deck and our cards are gonna be shuffled back into our deck. So we put the encounter back, obviously in this tutorial is the only card there is, but uh, that's fine, at least it's over there where it's supposed to be. And then the cards we used, they get shuffled into this deck. So next time we might get them back, we might get some different cards. Okay, and now that we are here, we are going to go ahead and spend another energy to explore whitening because obviously that, that's the location we needed to get to. Now, again, in this particular scenario, we're not gonna flip the card and read the exploration on the back. We're gonna go to the journal and see what happens when we get to whitening. Whitening. The hole is here, as always, gaping at the heart of whitening. The white lichen that gave this town its new name seems to grow out of it. It covers the walls of the nearby holes with a thick coat. Only close up can one discover it is in fact a layer of small sparkling crystals, like sea salt on the wooden posts of a pier. As you inspect it, several people watch you suspiciously. You shrug your arms to show them you're not interested in their secrets. And it instructs us to go to verse seven. So down on seven it says, there's no love lost between Connacht and the whitening. You shouldn't stay here too long. Now we can, we have a choice. We can visit the village tanner and go to verse nine, or we could ask whiteners about their menhir. Now we already know that they don't really like to be questioned about their menhir. So I think the better choice is to just go, go do what we need to get done, which is visit the village tanner in verse nine. You ask around about the tanner's airfare wanted you to find and draw some strange looks. Finally, someone tells you this man moved out several months ago. Angry and confused, you reach the tannery only to find the building abandoned and covered in cobwebs. What's going on? Was this a cruel joke? We gain one terror and we also gain part two of the surprising errand status. And the exploration ends. So we're going to go ahead and gain a terror. Great, so... We are at two terror now and we came all the way to whitening and there's nothing there. But I wanted to show you guys the back of this dude because it's pretty amazing. There's like a dude inside this dude's skirt or robe. <laughs> sure, robe. Okay, so now we need to get back to where we were and tell this Erfer that there was nothing there. No star, no nothing. So let's go. First thing we're gonna do is, actually we're running out of energy, but we need to get back. So let's spend one energy to travel to Hunter's Grove. Now, I would basically, most of the time, I would say let's just end the day there, but let's just, let's just run home. So we're gonna spend another energy, which means we're exhausted. We're gonna come down here. Now, remember our festering wound, we lose one uh, damage. We, we, yeah, lose one damage every time you become exhausted. So 
there's that. But that's not all. We still can go down to zero. I mean, why as well? We're already exhausted. We're not going to lose any more health. So let's go down to zero so that we can explore and talk to this dude and say, hey, what's up? You sent me on an errand and there was nothing there. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going back to Quanac Farmhold 101. But this time, we already read the introduction. We are going to complete your mission because we just got the surprising errand, the part two of the surprising errand status. So let's go to verse or yeah, to part two, verse two. You entered Quanact, exhausted and in pain, yet even in this condition, you quickly realize something happened in your absence. Many sad-eyed townsfolk walk the streets or argue in small groups. Startled, you look towards the mini here, but it seems fine, surrounded by ribbons flapping in the wind. There's no weirdness in Quanact, so what could draw all these people out of their houses? As you approach the forge, you almost stumble upon the boy who usually delivered air first messages. They're gone, the boy tells you. They left at the break of day. Erfurt wants you to take care of his workshop. You stumble into the building only to find it empty, save for a note lying on the workbench, held securely in place by a heavy ingot of starred iron. Three times you attempt to read the parchment, your eyes watering from helpless rage. It says Erfurt left Quanact without you, traveling with Lord Yavin, File, Albert, and Niante. They head for Camelot, where they hope to find help for your town. You were deemed too weak for this journey, not good enough. A silent rage grows within you, gone are the exhaustion or the pain. You leave the forge and look to the east. Somewhere there, behind rolling mists, clouds of weirdness, and dangerous trails, the Quanac champions journey on. You're sure you will find them. Each party member gains one terror. And then congratulations, <laughs> they're congratulating us. <laughs> we did terrible, but okay. You have finished the tutorial scenario. You will find Air First Letter in the game box. It will prepare you for the first chapter of the Fall of Avalon campaign. Good luck in the bleak world of Tainted Grail. Well, I definitely want to go find this old guy and tell him what's up. He just left us here and we journeyed and then what, we're deemed too weak? I don't think so. We did great. I mean, look at us. Yeah, we, we are a little terrified by the way we gained another terror, but we can do this, right? I hope you guys enjoyed the video and it gave you a better sense of what the game has to offer. There's a lot more to explore. I'm certainly going to be running the campaign and um, I'll update you guys on Twitter and Instagram. So if you're not following us there, make sure you do. Until then, may you play more games.